What's up guys, hitting up with Forte back in the video and today I'm coming at y'all with another banger. Today I'm doing a little review of the OnePlus 8 Pro. I also have the OnePlus 8 with me, but this video is primarily going to be focused on the OnePlus 8 Pro, but I will be doing a, some comparisons and I have some stuff on the screen showing both phones side by side so you can really see both of them. And you might even be able to decide which one you want to get out of the two from this video. We'll see. Quick plug, twitch.tv slash so 12, link in the description. Anyway, all right, so let's get into this phone. Uh, quick spec run through, you're getting a 6.7 inch quad HD 120 hertz display, beautiful display, Snapdragon 865, the fastest chip on the Android side with that 5G modem, your choice between 8 or 12 gigs of RAM and 128 or 256 gigs of storage, so RAM is plentiful, storage, you, you have as much storage as you need, 48 megapixel camera and a 4,510 milliamp hour battery. That battery is gonna last you all day. Me personally, I use the phone with Quad HD and 120 hertz, both enabled using all the resources and I was still able to use the phone through the entire day. So battery is not a problem. Uh, this phone also has a IP68 rating. Um, so, you know, you got your waterproofing there uh, or water resistance, I should say there. Uh, wireless charging you're getting 30 watts out of this guy using the proprietary charger i think it's 70 or 80 bucks on oneplus.com um but without that proprietary charger if you're using a chi wireless charger something for another phone you're only going to get five watts so it's a bit slow if you really care about wireless charging go ahead and grab that charger but honestly with the charging speed which we'll talk about later you will not need it this phone also has reverse wireless charging. So that was a feature that we saw back on the Galaxy S10, I think. Reverse wireless charging so you can charge your AirPods, your Galaxy Buds, Google Pixel Buds, whatever you want to charge with that. So it's pretty sick. And I think that's at three watts. So, you know, those devices, the battery isn't that big. So it should still charge fairly, fairly quickly. Let's get into the pros of the phone. Some of the best features of this phone. Number one the speed the speed of this phone is insane and they both this goes for both phones the speeds of these phones are insane you're going to be able to navigate through the phone with ease the snapdragon 865 just kills all applications you have so much ram overkill amounts of ram so you're going to be able to blow through whatever applications you throw at it on top of that speed like i mentioned before the charging speed we have to touch on that the charging speed of these phones is insane it really will make you switch the way that you charge your phones it'll make you really not be so reliable on having a charge you on you at all times because you know when you get to charge your phone it's going to be full within minutes i think it gets to 100 in about 40 minutes so it's super super quick design aspect the design of these phones is immaculate the glass is just the glass on the front and the back it's amazing i think it's corny and gorilla glass six if i'm not mistaken metal railing on the outsides and we have to talk about that curved edge, but we'll get to that in the cons. It has some positives, though. I do like the curved edge when you're watching videos. It looks really, really good. It's better in comparison to the OnePlus 7 Pro. So if you're coming from the OnePlus 7 Pro and you're used to those glare issues when you're watching videos, when you're in landscape, the glare everywhere, it's not so bad. It's actually a bit toned down with this phone. I actually like watching videos on this phone. The large display, really good colors, and the high resolution plus slight bit of curve. So when you're looking at it from the side, it's like, eh, you know, a little, it's something different. It's something different. But it does have its negatives, and we'll get to that later. Speaking on the display, the display, like I said before, Quad HD 1440p, and it has a really, really nice, really color accurate display. So this is one of the best looking displays that I've seen. I'm comparing it to my uh, OnePlus 8 on top of that, my iPhone XS Max, and you can tell the difference. The colors just pop. It looks really, really nice and super, super crisp. The colors just pop. Um, install speed for apps, something that you might not notice. When you're installing apps on this phone, they install really, really quickly. Uh, you know how when you download an app and it's downloading, you know, network percentage, 25%, 50, 75, 100, and then it says installing. On this phone, the apps install really, really quickly. I'm talking about really, really quick, I should say. They install within seconds, probably two to three seconds. On average, I've seen it take from like 10, five to 10 to maybe even 15 seconds to install an app. I think that has something to do with the UFS 3.0 storage in this phone. I'm not sure, but apps install pretty quick. So that's just a, another a positive for this phone. Last but not least, we'll touch on two things that are mostly Android features, and that's notifications and customization. I really like the way notifications are handled on Android. This phone runs Android, I think it's 10. <laughs> I, have, I have not been on Android in a minute. What is this, Android 10? Android 10, yeah. I was about to say 11. This phone's running Android 10, the latest. You already know the deal. And notifications are handled really, really well on Android. I really like how they're handled 
um, the categorization, the customization where you can change the alerts, which ones you want to play a sound, which ones you don't. You can change the order of priority between the, not the notifications. Really, really nice. I really like how Android does their notifications. Last but not least, customization. It's Android, right? Um, what you see on my phone, you'll see me running Nova Launcher Prime as I've been doing for over a decade, or probably a decade at this point, I've been using Nova Launcher Prime. And um, it's you can customize any and every part of this phone without even needing to root. That's Rooting is just another extra step. But uh, the Android, I'm really proud of Android. They brought a lot of features from the rooting community um, like picture in picture, uh, edge display stuff. They've brought a lot of stuff from different ROM makers, different ROMs like Lineage, OS, Cyanage, and Mod previously, and stuff like that into the ecosystem, into the operating system itself. So you don't have to, they're baked in, so you don't have to go outside to get them. That's really nice. Now, we have to get into some of the negatives. This phone's priced at $900 or $1,000 for the max configuration. We're just going to say 1000 We got to get into some of the negatives, and I'm allowed to nitpick because this phone is so expensive and my iPhone is $1,300, so you know I'm a nitpick. First negative that I'll give to this phone, um, probably before I get into it, probably the phrase that I can describe this OnePlus 8 Pro with is too fast for its own good. And what I mean by that is it's super quick, it snaps through everything just like I mentioned before, but the negatives come in when you're navigating through the phone. Some You get some glitchiness when you're going through the motions, for example, if you use the gestures. The buttons, it doesn't really do so much. I think it's because the buttons are something that have been an Android feature for years and years, so they're, they've been optimized to work. They don't really have any problems. But when you're using the new gestures, on the other hand, you have some bugs. They're not really prevalent, like they're not there all the time, but sometimes when you go to the recents, sometimes it'll show, it'll show an app that you were using before, like while you're doing the animation. It's pretty weird. But like I said before, it doesn't happen a lot, but it happens. And sometimes when you're opening apps, it's just, when you're opening apps, it's just quick, straight to the app. It is, sometimes it's not as fluid. Um, I'm just coming from the mindset of me using an iPhone previously, coming from a 10s Max. I pre I learn, I've learned to appreciate some of those animations, some of the splash screens, some stuff that you get with the iPhone. Or you can get it on here too, if you just turn down the uh, animation speed, you can actually decrease that, or increase that, sorry. But um, I've just learned to appreciate some of that stuff. And coming back to Android, I see which ones I like and which ones I don't like. And I kind of like the animations a bit more. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Second nitpick. Um, this might have to do with the internal audio. But for some reason, I was using a Belkin Rockstar, which is a little dongle that you can use USB-C or Lightning. And it inputs USB-C or Lightning and it outputs an aux to play music and then a USB-C or Lightning for charging. And it, you can use it in your car. For some reason with my iPhone, I typically play my music at like 35 volume. On my iPhone, I play it at that volume, but on this phone, I have to put it at my max car volume, which is I think 62 for some reason, and just to get the same audio. It's weird, I don't know. I think it has something to do with USB-C's audio output or something like that, but you won't have to worry about it with the speakers. The speakers are really, really top notch. I'll have some uh, footage on the screen right now showing you the speakers. But yeah, the speakers are really, really nice, as you can see on both phones. But on this, the, it must be something with the internal audio. I'm not sure. But that's just a little nitpick. You know what I'm saying? Uh, is it a deal breaker? Not really. But, you know, it's it's there. All right. Third con we'll get into is the streaming of music. Um, for some reason, when I was, I popped my SIM into this phone when I was using it. And the I could browse the internet on data on 3G, you know, 4G LTE. I could dows, I, dows. <laughs> I could browse the internet, um, but I could not stream music. I couldn't stream Google Play. I couldn't stream Spotify, and I couldn't stream Apple Music. It was really weird. I don't know if there was some sort of calibration that I had to do through my carrier. I didn't choose to do that just because I wasn't going to use the phone for that long. But um, that may have been it. Maybe that doesn't happen when you're like first activating the, the SIM card through that phone. It might be something with the network, but that's just something that happened. I just wanted to let you guys know about that. And the last con that I'll say is Netflix quality. It's really specific, really nitpicky, but I got to mention it. When I was watching Netflix on this phone, Quad HD 120 hertz it doesn't really matter, but we'll get most for the most part, the Quad HD is what we're, what we're paying attention to. 
the quality of Netflix streaming, I'm on Wi-Fi, so it should be streaming at max quality. For some reason, the app just, the the quality of the screen of the the videos that I was watching just wasn't as good as on my iPhone. And I think that might have to do with optimization. Optimization, for some reason, has always been worse on Android than iPhone. I don't know why that is. I really, I really feel bad for Android because they get the, they get the, um, the bad end of the deal when it comes to optimization. But um, hopefully they improve that. Netflix improves that on higher resolution displays, making sure that it's streaming at the right quality. And I, I'd like to see that get fixed as soon as possible. The main question with all of this is: Should you buy this phone? And I'll say this. I'll answer it with this know what you're getting into this phone is 6.78 inches it's pretty big i recommend you go into a verizon or t-mobile i think they might have them on display try it out hold the phone in your hand for minutes not just for seconds hold it in your in your hand for minutes play around with it hold it in different orientations see if you can actually handle the size of this phone secondly i'll just say this phone is quick it's fast it's probably besides the pixel I would like to say that this phone is the best representation of when I talk about how good Android is to people, maybe to like iPhone users or something like that. When I try to stress Android is amazing. I don't really Samsung's good, but I like stock Android. So I like to have I like to find a phone that's a good representation of stock Android of Android at its core. And this phone does it pretty well. I'm not going to lie. Um stock android nova launch you can add nova launcher prime to it to make it even more stock the settings menu everything just screams stock to me and you're getting all the speed and all that you can still customize your phone to your liking but at its base at android at its base i think this phone is one of the best representations of that and i love it for that i really love it for that but yeah some of the cons uh the only cons that i would give the display is probably the main one the ed the curved edge is a thing now with the OnePlus 8 I'll touch on this with the one plus eight it's not as drastic um and i really like the one plus eight's ergonomics the size of this phone is 6.5 inches now it's 1080p but it's 6.5 inches and coming from not only a one plus six but an iphone 10s max with the with iphone 10s max is a 6.5 inch display the one plus six was close to that they were about the same size this phone is perfect from a design standpoint this phone is perfect. I really like the interstellar glow on the back. The triple camera setup's nice as well. The metal, the silver metal railing is perfect, immaculate, and the less curved edge. This phone ergonomically is better than this phone, 100%. When we're talking about just holding the phone, just use, this phone's better, no doubt. Out the box, I knew that. When I put the case on it, without the case, whatever, out the box, I knew that. But you're missing out on some of those features, the reverse wireless charging, the wireless charging period, IP68 if you care. But more importantly, you're missing out on a quad HD display and 120 Hertz. Now, with the refresh rate, does it matter? Can you tell the difference between 60 and 90? Yes, between 60 and 120, of course. Between 90 and 120 though, not really. Um, I use 144 Hertz displays all day on my computer and I use a 60 Hertz with 120 Hertz touch rate i think that's what they use apple on my iphone 10s max and honestly i've been, i'm used to these displays they're they're nothing to me but to someone coming from a 60 hertz display that they've been using their whole life and they only use computers with 60 hertz panels this will just seem like really quick to me that they'll love it it'll seem really quick to them um i think they'll really appreciate it. so if you're one of those people out there that have always used 60 hertz displays you'll love it you'll love either one of these phones the refresh rate is not the true is not the main uh choosing point but would i recommend these phones of course definitely i'd recommend both um but more importantly i definitely one of the main things that i would be focused on when choosing between these phones is the size do you like that curved edge can you can you handle the curved edge and that's pretty much it camera quality on both phones is pretty decent um it, it's it is what it is honestly these phones are just great um, the one plus eight, I will say is a bit overpriced. I think they should have dropped the one plus eight by like a hundred, but the one plus eight pro to all the people out there saying it's overpriced. It's not overpriced. It's priced well for the feature set. And I want to end this video off there. I think I've covered everything. These phones are great, great choices. Either one of them, you'll be satisfied definitely. And if you're new to Android and you're looking into getting a one plus eight or one plus eight pro, you will not be disappointed the only, besides the display wise. If you know what you're getting into, 
you will not be disappointed. Uh, and that's pretty much it for me. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for coming to my review of the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro. Uh, if you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. If you want to talk about anything, Android, iOS, want the phones, if you have any rants you want to put down in the description, comment them down below. Uh, let's talk it out together. And um, yeah, if you want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and check, click off the bell to get all my notifications. That's it for me. I'm going to go get something to eat. <laughs> and I'll catch you guys later, man. Peace.